Here's example four with applications of trig. So if you want to copy this worksheet to follow along with, check the video description. There's a link in there. You can click that link and get a copy of this. So uh, example four, uh, you are taking a hot air balloon ride and your friend is on level ground 100 feet away from the point of launch with a camera. At one instant, uh, the angle of elevation from the camera to you is 31.7 degrees. One minute later, the angle of elevation from the camera to you is 76.2 degrees. And uh, how far to the nearest tenth of a foot did you travel during that minute? Okay. So let's zoom back out a little bit and we'll draw a picture to illustrate what's happening. Okay, so um, blah blah blah, we're talking about riding a hot air balloon and then uh, there's a point of launch, so let's go ahead and draw the launch point. So here uh, will be our launch point. So this is going to be the launch point. Okay, so really the balloon's just going straight up. Um, and then uh, the friend is uh, on level ground 100 feet away. So we'll put the friend over here. Okay, and the friend is holding a camera. So there's more of those great artistic skills there. Uh, okay, so at one instant the angle of elevation from the camera to you is 31.7 degrees. So we're here riding up in this hot air balloon. So up, 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 the balloon goes. And, um, okay, so we're talking about the angle of elevation uh, between the camera and you in the balloon. So to do angle of elevation, we have to have a flat uh, line here, flat horizontal line from the camera uh, to here. Okay, and that's gonna be a right angle because the, the balloon we're just assuming is going straight up. And we need this flat horizontal line to talk about angle of elevation from the camera. So at one instant, the angle of elevation from the camera to you is 31.7 degrees. So, uh, that one instant, <clears throat> so we're right here in the balloon and the friend is over here with the camera. So this right here is 31.7 degrees. Okay, 31.7 degrees. And then uh, one minute later, the angle of elevation is 76.2 degrees. So that's, We'll put that up here, up at the top, and then draw this line here. Okay, so remember the angle of elevation is measured from the flat horizontal. So this uh, first angle of elevation was 31.7 degrees. Now this other one is 76.2 degrees. Let's zoom in on the picture now. So that's uh, this entire angle right here. Okay, so that entire thing is 76.2 degrees, that entire angle. Okay. Now we want to know how far do we travel in that minute. So the first angle of elevation was taken when we were here in the balloon. The second one a minute later was taken up here. So we want to know how far do we travel in that minute. So we want to know what's this value here. Let's just call it x. Okay. And let's label some other stuff. So uh, it might be good to know this whole side. So we're going to have to call this h. So if this is h, um, and OK, this is h, this is x. Uh, then what's this whole side? The whole side is just x plus h. Okay, so we, we sort of don't really know what it is, but it's nice to have something to call it. So anyway, what about this right here? This right here uh, is 100. So or the friend is on level ground 100 feet away from the point of launch. So here's the launch point, here's the friend, 100, uh, 100 feet. So yeah, we're measuring the distance uh, from the launch point to the camera, not exactly the friend, but it, we don't really want to be that uh, nitpicky with the details. So instead of drawing uh, a friend with the camera, we could just draw this whole thing as just a point. So we could think about it like that to make it simpler. But anyway, um, just 100 feet from the launch point to where all the action's happening over here at the camera. Okay. Now, uh, now we can start setting up equations like we've been doing. So we're going to have to use some tangents, uh, just like we've been doing with the angle of uh, elevation, angle of depression stuff. So let's ignore the big triangle for now and just focus on the smaller one. So here. Uh, hypotenuse here, we have this uh, little angle in here is 31.7 degrees, and then uh, this side right here is 100, this side right here is h. So tangent of 31.7 degrees is opposite over adjacent, h over 100. So let's go ahead and write that down. Tangent of 31.7 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, h over 100. Okay. Now let's do the same kind of thing with the larger triangle. So now ignore the 31.7 degrees, ignore this side in here. Just focus on this hypotenuse, this entire side right here, and this base. Okay, so hypotenuse, oops, 
hypotenuse and tire side and the base. Okay, so now for this whole angle right here, uh, that whole angle is 76.2 degrees. Okay, that entire angle is 76.2 degrees. The tangent of that is opposite, which is x plus h, divided by the adjacent, which is still 100. So let's go ahead and write that down. Tangent of 76.2 degrees is uh, opposite, x plus h, over adjacent, 100. Okay. Okay, now let's uh, forget about the picture and then we'll just focus on solving. So what are we solving for? We're solving for x, right? Remember, we want to know how far do we travel in that minute. Okay, the first instant was here, the second instant was here, a minute in between. We want to know how far to the nearest tenth of a foot uh, did we travel during that minute. So that's uh, from here to here, what's that distance? So in other words, solve for x. Okay, so ignore all that, go back to the equations. Now we want to solve for x. So what we have here is uh, two equations with two variables, x and h. Okay, but uh, this equation doesn't actually have an x in it, so this won't be that bad. So what we can do is solve for h here, and then put that value into this equation here. Okay? So here, um, this is going to be, let's multiply both sides by 100. We have 100 times the tangent of 31.7 degrees equals h. Okay? Now, let's actually do the same thing over here. But before we do that, I want to mention uh, we could toss this into a calculator right now. But just like in the previous few examples, we want to avoid doing that until the very end. Because if we put this into a calculator, we're going to have to round out to a few decimal places, and it's best to avoid doing that for as long as we can. Okay? And in this case, we can avoid doing it until the very end, which is great, so we'll just do that. Um, okay, so anyway, and the reason is we don't want to uh, have to approximate too much, because if we start approximating too much too soon, then we might get uh, an inaccurate answer, and we don't want to have that. Okay, so anyway, um, we'll do the same thing on this equation, multiply both sides by 100. So then we have 100 times the tangent of 76.2 degrees equals x plus h. Okay, Now, uh, we know what h is, right? h is this mess right here, so we can take this mess and toss it into here. So if h is 100 times the tangent of 31.7 degrees, and then x plus h equals this, then putting this uh, expression for h into this equation here, what are we going to get? We're going to get 100 times the tangent of 76.2 degrees equals x plus uh, 100 times the tangent of 31.7 degrees. Okay, Maybe we should have subtracted h from both sides over here first, but it doesn't really matter and it's too late now anyway. So, okay, now we have just this big old number mess here equals x plus this big old number mess here. So it's really just a number equals x plus another number. So we'll subtract this number from both sides. And that'll be it. Then we can toss it into a calculator then. 100 times the tangent of 31.7 degrees. So subtract uh, 100 times the tangent of 31.7 degrees from both sides. And then we just get uh, x equals 100 times the tangent of 76.2 degrees minus 100 times the tangent of 31.7 degrees. Now it might be tempting to try to somehow combine these into one because we have 100 times a tangent minus 100 times a different tangent, but there's really nothing nice that we can do other than factoring and maybe using a, uh, a sum and difference formula, but that's really, it's actually not going to be that nice because we can just toss this into a calculator anyway because we're supposed to answer to the nearest tenth of a foot. Okay, So uh, if we toss this into a calculator, Let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So zoom in a little bit over here. Make sure that we're in degree mode. Okay, DEG, DEG for degree, because uh, we're dealing with degrees, not radians. So we have 100 times the tangent of 76.2 degrees minus 100 times the tangent of 31.7 degrees. Okay. And that's approximately. Uh, to the nearest tenth of a foot, that means to the first decimal place, that's 345.4, approximately. We'll zoom out a little bit. So x is about 345.4 feet, and then don't forget the units, feet. Okay, so that's how far we moved uh, in that minute to the nearest tenth of a foot. 345.4 feet is how far we moved from here to here in that one minute. Okay, so that's it for example four of applications of trig.